I'm not playing with you, man. Jackson, what are you doing? What did I do? He has not told me anything. Are you serious, my little dog? On June 9th, 2018, officers Mark Burke and Duncan Roberts were dispatched to a residence following a report of a domestic disturbance. While the girlfriend remained unharmed, the boyfriend, Clay Holly, had locked himself in the house. When knocking didn't get his attention, one of the officers came up with the bright idea of breaking in. Clay quickly heard the noise up front and saw these cops turned burglars trying to bust their way in. Hey! Hey! Don't break in my, don't try to break in my house. Answer the door! I'm right here. We've been knocking on the door. Open the damn door. Right, Open the door, we're coming through it. No, you have no right. Yes, we do. Actually, yes. A domestic occurred here. We're gonna conduct an investigation. You can open the door or we can kick it in. We can kick it in. Open it or we'll kick it in. Because we're conducting an investigation. Do you do you not understand? In a minute, I'm going to kick the door open. Open the then door. open the door and talk to us like a reasonable person. Open the door. Then I'll kick it. Then open the door. We didn't do anything to your door. We're trying to open the dang door. Why? Because you and your your wife over here got in a fight. Open the door. My wife and my girlfriend. I don't care I whatever, just, whichever it is. Open the door. I'm going to give you to the count of three. If I kick that door and you're going in jail for hindering an investigation, you understand that? What are you One. What are you a domestic. Two. This is my house. All right, dude. You asked for it. Move out of the way. No, no. Move out of the Move way. Out of the way. Move out of the way. Move. Oh, you guys don't work here Move out of the way. Why? You got your no. taser ready? I'm gonna kick the door. Move. Move out of the way. Come on, move. Open the door. I'll give you one more chance to open that door. What are you investigating? I just told you, open the door. When Clay still wouldn't come out, Officer Mark decided to take things into his own hands. I'm not playing with you, man. Get on the ground! Oh, yes, sir. Yeah. Get on the ground! Uh, yes, sir. You're right, you're right. I, I'm not trying to fight with that. What are you investigating? A domestic. The cops kept Clay in the back of a police car for almost an hour, then eventually released him without filing any charges against him. As for the rookie officers, they are now facing charges themselves criminal trespass, property damage, and making an unlawful arrest. Officers responded to a call at around 7.45 a.m. on May 23, 2020, reporting a man dancing in the street in the 2000 block of Central Avenue. Upon arriving, the officers informed the man about the call they received. The situation escalated when one officer instructed him not to reach for anything, detaining him during the questioning. As the man became uncooperative, the officers physically restrained and wrestled him to the ground. Throughout the incident, he repeatedly questioned why they were touching him and resisted being held. The police asserted that he was resisting arrest. Your hands off of me now. You don't get to no. check. Right no, no, now no, no, you're no. in the street, so technically... Sir, sir, I was on the side. Hey, Excuse hands, me, let right. my hands go. Miss, we understand. Let me go. Sir. Let me go. No. Yes. No, 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 no. Do you have ID let on you? Let me go. Why are you touching me? Right now. Why are you touching me? Stop asking questions. I Listen. have two questions. No, to no, no, ask no, 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 no. I was walking down the street. Put him over in the street. If you resist, you will be put under arrest. Officer. Stop resisting now. Ma'am, ma could you let these people know that I'm. Not... Please record. Please record. Please record. The officers proceeded to handcuff the man without providing any justification. Here we go. Let us help you. Let me go. Okay, you're under arrest right now. You're not. I can get up. Okay. So why are you squeezing on my neck? We're trying to uh, help you up. No, you're gotcha. right up. There we go. That's all it is. 
Let me double lock them. Your name, sir? I'm Sergeant Connor. I'm the supervisor. Okay, supervisor. Okay. Could you let the dog, um, excuse me, there's a, I'll have witnesses all over down this block. I live across the street. Okay. I was minding my business. Okay, we'll, my, we'll, we'll talk to you in a second about it, okay? For I'm right, talking to Sergeant Mon. Okay, well, let's, come over, let's, let's come over here and we'll talk about this it, okay? Right here is all right. <laughs> the man received a resisting arrest citation after the incident. Despite suing the city in the aftermath, he gained little else from the notoriety surrounding his arrest. 18-year-old Rodney Reese found himself stopped by Plano police officers on his way home from work at Walmart during the Texas freeze. The police received a call expressing concern about a male wearing a short-sleeved shirt stumbling along the icy conditions. It was meant to be a welfare check. Reese, who lives just a few blocks away with his mom, reiterated to the officers that he was fine. Hey man, Ooh. you trying to get home? Are you trying to get home? Or look, we just want to talk to you. Oh, I'm all right? Good. I'm on the way home. I'm straight. Okay. Cool, okay, but you're walking in the middle of the road. All right. I understand that. I'll be I do this every night, literally. I'm straight. Okay. You ain't cold or nothing? Nope. Officers continued to follow him for two minutes and 17 seconds before placing handcuffs around his wrists. Relax. Just relax, all right? Just relax. We're I'll, just I'll, trying to talk to I you. Gotta add it. I got an anger problem. Please get off me. Y'all not going to, y'all not, no. Stop. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to touch. Yeah, you didn't stop. Put your hands behind your back now. You are not free to go. Reese faced arrest for walking in the street, with the official charge being pedestrian in the roadway. The high school student ended up spending the night in jail. Reese believes he was racially profiled, but the Plano police chief asserted that race was not a factor in the arrest. Although there were initially charges against Reese for resisting arrest, they were later dropped. On the night of August 21st, a 15-year-old boy and his friends, engaged in the game of Ding Dong Ditch on various houses in the neighborhood, targeted Captain Dimsey Walter's residence. <laughs> Believing it was another group of teenagers, Dempsey hurried to their residence and forcibly pulled the innocent boys out of their home. Oh, oh, I find your back. Yeah, no. 320, 324 oh, tap, we got two detained. 324 tap. 324 tap. Yeah, go ahead, look him up. Stop moving, do not resist! I'm not moving. I'm not moving, huh? I'm not moving. I promise I'm not moving. Is there any boss in the house? No, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Where's your parents at? My mom's at work, she's on the phone. You call the police, right? My phone right there. You're under arrest. Okay, for what? Come on out here. You go ahead and put him in my car. Put him on. Put him on over here. Put on a tap. Yeah, are we still at two outstanding, Craig? Hey, we're at two outstanding. I don't know if we're late right now. Come Get out real quick. At the same time, another team of officers had located the actual culprits. On the ground, now! Upon learning this, Dempsey hurried to the location and applied pressure on the neck of the 15-year-old. On your back. Other one behind your back. What? 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 To make matters worse, after the boys were placed in police vehicles, Dempsey attempted to disable his body camera and assaulted the handcuffed juvenile in the patrol car, inflicting serious injuries. As a consequence, Dempsey faced suspension without pay and was charged with two counts of felony assault and two counts of official misconduct. The outlook for him retaining his job seems bleak. At the Fairfield Inn and Suites Hotel on Colorado Avenue in Avon in mid-2016, an incident occurred after hotel staff reported a man they believed was associated with ISIS. The individual was found in possession of multiple disposable phones. Upon the police's arrival, tensions quickly escalated. A third-party call from the sister of the desk clerk and also her father advising there's an Arabic male 
in full headdress, several cell phones claiming his allegiance to ISIS. She's locked herself in the bathroom, no weapons seen at this time. I do not have a clothing description or anything further on the mail in the lobby. Head to Fairfield at Chester in 611. At this point, several officers drew their weapons, aiming without any initial inquiry. The situation escalated further as they approached closer. There he is. There he is. Right there. On the ground! Get 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 on your car. Handcuffs were quickly applied, solely based on the desk clerk's perception of the male individual without a single question. All right, turn. Turn to your left. Or your right. Turn to your right. What is it? Hold on. Hold on. like this. That's it, brother? One to ten. by Not good, this. I'm curious. And this is good, not good. Yeah, it's not good. It's right. Make a sweep this place. I don't know what's got it. This guy got to make sure he's got nothing on. We look. Relax, relax. We look. Relax. We're going to We're gonna get you to stand up first. You got that? Sit up. Sit up. Up over here, man. Open up. Turn your arms. Turn your arms. Good. He's got a wallet or something. Officers conducted a thorough search of his wallet, pockets, and even his shoes, but they found none of the items they were expecting. I thought, I thought I saw that. Where did the that come from? Uh, like the silver minivan? Uh, Where are your shoes? What's his name? Ahmed. Uh, Ahmed? Oh, he's, he's police? Yeah. Police officer, where? In Cleveland? Speak Arabic? The handcuffs were quickly removed once it was evident that they found nothing on him. The man, who seemed to be a foreigner caught up in unnecessary trouble, thought the ordeal was over. However, there's more to the story that unfolded even after he was released. You okay? They got scared, called us. Him, you'll we'll get okay? Thanks. And now he just He just passed out. Luckily, paramedics were present at the location, prepared to offer assistance. I'm gonna take the glasses, give them to the officer here and put them with your other possessions. Can you talk to me? Ahmed, how do you feel? What's going on? Do not feel so well? Alright, boss, I'm gonna sit you up here. How you feel? That good? That good? Okay. All right. I'm gonna grab your wrist, boss. I'm gonna stand you up, and we're gonna move you to this cat. Gabby. Ahmed, can you talk to me so we can treat you here? The man was identified as Ahmed Al Manhali, a businessman in the UAE. He was transported to a local hospital as a precaution. Avon police confirmed he made no statements related to ISIS. The incident resulted from a miscommunication, and the actions taken by officers had the potential to induce a heart attack. In December 2020, a YouTube user named Brian B. visited the North Brunswick Police Department to file a complaint. However, two weeks later, while at home wrapping Christmas gifts, officers unexpectedly arrived at his door, inquiring about a 911 call that had allegedly originated from his residence. Can I help you? Can I help you? Yeah. Everything all right? Everything's fine. From here? Yeah. Are you the only one home? No. Who else is home with you? My girlfriend and my roommate. Everybody's fine. Well, Nobody called. Some, somebody called and they said, it came back to this address and it said, uh, they told us there was yelling or something in the background initially and then they hung up and they haven't been able to get in touch with everyone since. So that's and nobody home. called. Everybody's fine. All right. Can we talk to them real quick? No. No, we need to. Well, you're not. We need to. It's not going to happen. You don't, you don't understand how this works. We got a 911 call from this address. We have Nobody call. called 911. How do I know that? Uh, bro, oh, how, do, do I have to prove something to you right now? Yes. We have to speak with everyone who lives here to make sure they call 911. As soon as we speak with everyone and we can confirm everything's fine, we leave. 
That's it, man. We just make sure everything's fine. Why are you giving us such a problem? Be well, because you're over here shining a f***ing flashlight in my yeah, apartment. You uh, you're over here shining a flashlight, let me finish what I was saying, into my f apartment. I mean, you're taking care of Christmas gifts, watching the UFC fight. You guys come over here banging like a bunch of f animals. No one called 911. You're giving me a hard time. You're shy. You're still shining a f flashlight at me. Turn your flashlight off. The officers were seeking an entry point into the house. As he started to close his door, they seized the opportunity to forcefully enter. No. Despite confirming that there was no actual 911 call and no landline in the house, the officers persisted and refused to leave. What do you want to sort out? What have no, we not here. sorted out? We sort it. It's a landline, okay? Okay, no, there's no landline here. There's no landline but there's here. still one registered to this house. So what do you want me to do for you? So there, we solved with a 911. Okay, so sir. get the f out now. Sir. No, no, sir. You just slammed the door at me. Get the f out of the house. You don't close the door on the police. I don't give a f you have no right to enter. We do, actually. No, you we don't. Do. There's a warrantless entrance, so get the f out. As if that wasn't bad enough, additional officers were called in to forcibly enter the house. Get out. Okay. Get out. We don't want to be an issue. Name and badge number. 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 Door. What, what do we got? Name and badge number. He went to close the door on the case. He's pissed off to push the door. Okay. And now he won't give us a seat. Who else is upstairs? I want you to go. I'm not going to give any of you my information. You're not scaring me. I'm not answering any questions. Please get out of my house. You understand why we're here, right? I don't care why you're here. Get the f*** out. Okay. Turn that off. So, let Turn me, that light off. Let me explain this to you. Jesus Christ. There you go. You see. How many of you does it take to see? What do you want to what do you want to look at? I don't want to hear you what have, you have to you say. Have people you care about, I right? don't care. Then they claimed he had no right to not let them in. What do you guys want from me? This is my boss, sir. Keep you keep him away from me. I don't want you touching me, dude. You don't know what's going on, sir. Yeah, this is all. Awesome. Just sitting here, got a bang on the door. I have an internal affairs complaint on one of the sergeants, and now this shit happens. This is retaliatory. This is another one going to internal affairs. I'm telling you, you guys don't know how to quit, any of you. I want you guys to leave. I don't care. They don't care. They don't care. No one cares. We want you out. I don't understand, like, you, you guys can't take a hint. You think you have a right to push my door in? Your, your, your cops pushed my door, hit me with the door right there. I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm unarmed, I have a camera. Technically, what you did could have been obstruction. They're, they're on a lawful police investigation. Then take me for it. I, I want you to take me for it. I didn't observe it from what they're telling me. That, I'm just telling you technically this, okay? Then let's go. I'll take it to court. Oh, okay, so what do you have to figure out? <laughs> what do you have to figure out? Is anybody was need, in need of assistance, man? Huh? No. Does anybody need assistance? I have zero need for assistance. Perfect. I'm trying to go back and finish watching this movie. Exactly. All right. So can you please? Yeah. Please, okay, please go. After some time, the officers leave. The questionable incident unfolded as the call they were responding to turned out to be from a non-existent hang-up line, raising suspicions about the entire situation. On June 6, 2023, a Seminole County, Florida deputy observes an Orlando police officer, Alexander Shea, exceeding the speed limit by driving at 80 miles per hour in a 45 miles per hour zone reaching speeds over 100 miles per hour. Over 100 miles an hour trying to catch up with this butt here. He's the guy that, oh, I Copy down that bumper. Yeah, one one zero seven zero. Pull over. You gonna pull over? Please say a command. Pull over.
but upon activating his lights and trying to initiate a stop, Shei seems to have different intentions. Three one thirteen to three thirteen. What? Do you... I am going I, into I... work, my man. Why are you trying to pull me over as I am going? Because you're work? going eighty and a forty-five. I am going into work. Okay, where are you going? What does to it work look for? like I am dressed for? I have. What no... does it look like I am dressed for? My name is Deputy Hilton, and they see your driver's license. No. Okay. Three one thirteen. Copy at ten fifty. Subsequently, Shea was terminated from his position and faced charges of resisting an officer and fleeing from law enforcement. A man, mistakenly suspected of a crime, was forcibly placed in a patrol car by officers. In the midst of the struggle, the man kicked the officers, leading to assault charges. However, all charges against him were eventually dropped. Why are you acting like this, man? Because I'm working out and you're bothering me. You're going to be detained right now, okay? Okay, for what? For being a suspect of family violence until I figure out who you are. The suspect police were looking for was Darian Anthony Smith Jr. When officers requested identification from the man, he refused to provide any information about himself. On camera, officers can be seen attempting to match the suspect's description with the individual, Ometu. I talked to her, I was like, what is he wearing? She was like, green shirt, black male, uh, black, uh, black shorts. She was like, yeah, he has a little bit of a beard. I was like, she's like, not a full beard. However, a notable difference is evident here. When officers compelled Ometu into the patrol car, he was wearing white shorts. The officers claimed they were hurt but not injured during the process. Seven minutes later, the actual victim arrived and informed the officers that Ometu wasn't the man who had assaulted her. That's not him? Okay, not at all. That's for sure, 100% not him. Police ultimately retrieved a mugshot of the real suspect from three years ago and still maintain their belief that Ometu could be the individual in question. That's the guy. Yeah. He looks a lot like him. You just throw some facial hair on there, add a few years. In the end, he was taken to jail and faced felony charges for assaulting a police officer. However, those charges were later dismissed by the district attorney, a decision backed by the same officers who apprehended him. Lieutenant Rick Byron was in disbelief when Officer Justin Augustin told him that he crashed his cruiser because he was attempting to urinate while driving, a bizarre and irresponsible act. Augustin's bloodshot eyes and slurred speech made it clear that he was under the influence of alcohol. Upon returning to the station, Byron witnessed Augustin having a heated exchange of words with other officers. You, he needs to... Yeah, Augie, come here. Let's go out here in the garage. He wasn't handcuffed, and he had a weapon. After being disarmed, Byron told him that he would be taken to the hospital for a test, but Augustin refused. We're going to go down and do a drug and alcohol test down at the hospital, you and I. And uh, you don't need all your gear, so. All right. What else do you got on you? you got done. pocket knife, huh? I'm done. What's going on, though? Tell me what's I'm going done. on, bud. I'm done. Trust what you're done. Do you, you going to go with me and take the test on you? You're refusing it? You don't want to do that. I'm done. As the officer attempted to understand what was happening, Augustine grew increasingly confrontational, even resorting to using profanity. Don't don't play this game with me, bud. I'm trying to be your. I'm well, trying to help you out here. You ain't doing. Well, I can't do stuff. I'm just doing what I got to do. All it's my job. If you want to leave, go ahead and leave. All right, let's go. Let's go. Come on, Augie. Don't do this, man. It ain't worth it. As Augustine left the station, prepared to drive home, Byron questioned him about his ability to drive. Surprisingly, Augustine's demeanor underwent a complete transformation, and he burst into tears. Okay, to drive, brother. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, I'm worried about you. Yeah. All right, well, get going then. Do what you got to do, all right? Augie, you need to, you need to get it. You need to relax. No, I, huh? What'd you say? Who is? You just wrecked a cruiser. It's not the end of the world. I know, it's not the end of the world. We can do this, Augie. If you just go down and take the test like we're asking you, if you do that, then we can at least get that cleared to where you can come back to work. Later, Augustine confessed that he had consumed alcohol earlier in the day. How much did you drink today, Augie? A lot. You know he's going to want to do a test, right? Byron eventually persuaded Augustine to come back to the station while they figured out the next steps. Augustine was so intoxicated that he repeatedly fell off his seat, necessitating another officer to hold on to him to keep him seated. Subsequently, Augustine resigned from the force and following the investigation, he was convicted of handling a weapon and operating a vehicle while under the influence. He received a one-year probation 
177 days of suspended jail time, a $300 fine, and court costs. On a Wednesday night, the police received a 911 call reporting two men and a woman possibly attempting to break into a pickup truck parked in the neighbor's driveway. The caller mentioned that the potential thieves were in a black Volkswagen wagon, which is what officers observed accelerating toward them upon their arrival, with a man behind the wheel. Oh, driver, get out of the car! One of the officers points a weapon at him, and the driver complies with all commands, leading to the officers handcuffing him. What we're here is with one of the neighbors call looks like somebody was trying to break in the truck. Okay. And they said it was a, they were driving a Volkswagen. Uh, that's his truck. <laughs> okay, that's his truck? So, like, there's nothing going Did he on. Do? The other officer is speaking with the truck's owner and confirms that there was no attempted theft. 19-year-old Fusini Sissoko expressed confusion about why the police stopped him. I didn't understand what was going on until I see them lower their guns. I was like, wow, that was, that was pointed at me. That's a, it's a scary moment. They didn't say sorry for wasting your time, sorry for pointing interface they didn't say anything like that. Officers released Sissoko two minutes after handcuffing him, repeatedly apologizing for the misunderstanding. All right, you got any other questions for us? Uh, no. Okay, so extraordinarily sorry. That is... No, it's fine. It happens. Okay. We're all human. The police released the body cam video on social media, asserting that the officers did not commit any wrongdoing. It was a Thursday night in November 2019, and undercover Metro police officers were tailing a car they believed carried a homicide suspect. However, things took an unexpected turn when officers began following Ralph Ward. The body camera footage captured the unfolding events as Ward stopped at a liquor store on his way home from work. With weapons drawn, Ward was ordered to the ground and arrested. Despite his assurances that they had the wrong person and presenting evidence of GPS tracking on his phone, he was handcuffed and charged with felony evading arrest. His case was eventually dropped seven months later. It was eight or 10 of them that night, you know, and just one of me. What did, what did I do? What, what did I do? And the first thing that's going through my head was, I'm not gonna see my family for Thanksgiving. We lit you up on 65 North. No, you didn't. Yes, you, did. you took off. No, took sir. Off. No, sir. No, sir. I promise you. I didn't even come out on 60. They weren't hearing any. So here I am with this felony evading arrest, you know, hanging over my head, my life, my life, my livelihood, everything's just hanging in limbo. It's really been a very traumatic experience. I don't wish this on my worst enemy to actually have to go through. Ward chose to take legal action. He filed a lawsuit against the Metropolitan Government and its employees, alleging Fourth Amendment violations, false arrest, malicious prosecution, and excessive force. In the end, the city opted to settle the case for $236,000. The officers conducting a routine traffic check observed a marked patrol vehicle driving erratically. Upon pulling it over, they discovered a police officer in full uniform inside, and to their surprise, an open alcohol container was found in the car. Despite the smell of alcohol on the officer's breath, he falsely claimed not to be drunk and refused to undergo a field sobriety test. He came and he was stumbling. Do you smell anything? Yeah. What do you smell? Okay. okay. I was just making sure. Um, what kind of beer you came? He said it was in his center call so when he first got there. It was... Hey, man, just sit down. Hey, did you do anything to celebrate today, man? Uh, no, sir. No? no. Listen, man. Um, it's rather, took, it's uh, better to be honest. I'm in our profession, you. I took a lot of uh, um, Benadryl. In our profession, you know it's best to be honest, right? No, no, no. No, I know. Okay, I know. I, 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 uh, I took some deep Benadryl. There is a open container of alcohol in your vehicle. Have you been drinking at all today? Uh, no, that's, uh, that's maybe three days old. Okay. I smell the alcohol coming from your breath. Okay. Are you willing to perform standard field sobriety exercises? You are? Uh, no. You, so you don't want to do them? Subsequently, he was taken into custody, and a breathalyzer test confirmed his state of being under the influence. As a result, he was arrested for DUI. In March 2020, as Dr. Paramjit Parar was entering his refugee center, he honked at a police car blocking his way. Officer Justin Henderson of the Aurora Police Department quickly exited his vehicle, brandishing his weapon, and verbally confronted the doctor. Let me see your hands. What are you doing? What did you so say? To send me a routine to... Uh, You're on my property, block. leave. Stay in the car. No. Of Galena. You're in my property, you can get off it now. Uh, it's your property? I own it. You can get off it now. Okay, can you show me? 
I don't have to show you anything. Okay, but you first off don't drive up on a police officer that's sitting there like that. You don't swear at me. Okay, well... You don't sit on my property without asking. I didn't know it was your property. Please leave the property now. Okay, well... You're trespassing. There's signs that say trespassing. What? I'm not trespassing on your property. Please leave the property! I got stuff to do. Come on, come on. Be on your way. No, I'm gonna figure out whose property this is first. Get off the property. I gotta unload crap. Okay, well, we're gonna figure out whose property this is first, because I'm not taking your word for it. You know you're going in on the wrong way, too. You know you're sitting in my property. What's your name? Jay Henderson. Officer Henderson. So I also clear people off of your property all the time that are trespassing. After seeing Dr. Perrar enter the building with the security code, the officer should have left. However, he persisted in trailing the doctor inside. You're making it harder for me to serve your community. If you'd get off my property, I'd appreciate it. I got better stuff to do than to placate you on a Sunday night. I'm trying to do some work to help your community here, okay? You can leave now. To make matters worse, Henderson called for backup, portraying the doctor as the aggressor because he honked, attempting to justify his own inappropriate behavior with a weapon in hand. And he comes rolling in here like he's about to assault me with his car, and then he's mad at me that I cuss at him. Now he's videotaping me. When the doctor persistently demanded the officers leave his property, Henderson resorted to threatening him with arrest. Is there a reason why you came in the way you did, like you were gonna freaking- Do I have to answer your question? No. That's actually, yeah, you do because it's- Because it's, it's easier to unload my car from this side. It's actually careless driving. It was later revealed that the doctor was well within his rights to assert himself. Yes, you should write Aurora City Council. Yes, write your own city council. Give your money till it hurts. Give your time till it hurts. A year prior, Henderson had been involved in the death of a 22-year-old man during a mental health crisis. He faced no charges in that incident. However, following this confrontation, he received a one-week suspension without pay and was mandated to undergo de-escalation training. This police officer faced one of the most substantial lawsuits filed against her. Let's see why. Hey! Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Okay. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around! Put your hands up higher. Um, but can I please get my cell phone? We'll get your cell phone in a second. Is there any weapons in the car? Ready? No, ma'am. There's nothing on There's no weapons in the car? Can I get Take a seat. Phone? I will get your cell phone for you. Take a seat. I got your right shoulder. I see a car seat. Clear. Okay, let's get the bed. I got a holster right here in the passenger seat. Okay. Who in their right mind would park their car on a train track? The officer asserted she was unaware that the suspect was in the car, leading to her dismissal. Subsequently, the following officers also faced termination. In May 2023, I, Young City, a YouTube user, was pulled over by Maryland State Trooper Cody Holder for speeding. Mr. Henderson, how you doing, boss? Hi, right, man, I'm Trooper Holder with the Maryland State Police. You're being an oddly visual report, okay? All right, you know how I stopped you? So I don't. You know how fast you were driving? 35. Back here? Back here? Okay. When I, Young City, handed over his license, the officer attempted to retrieve his friend's ID, but I, Young City, refused to comply. Do you have any ID? Nah, you pulled me over. He don't need his ID. He don't need that. He pulled me yeah, over. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Trust you, me. You don't, you don't, you don't need. Uh, he pulled me over. You ain't got nothing to do with this traffic stop. Listen, you don't have to identify yourself. Okay, I, I'm just asking if you would mind just giving me your name, just so I know who I am. No, he don't. That's all. Here you go. Rather than issuing a warning or a ticket, Holder instructed him to exit the vehicle, leading to a strange turn of events. Nah, his friends know his rights. What's wrong with you? He can't search my. He on. 
though. He been, hey, he followed me since Canopy, right? Pulled me over to him, like, cause he knew I live right here, so he wanted to pull me over before I get to the house. Nah, I'm stopping at my house, shawty. Camera one, two, three, four, you know what I'm saying? And I'm recording, and he about to go on YouTube. It was soon clear what Holder was trying to pin on him. I don't give you permission to search my car. <laughs> you, you a tough guy, huh? Get that shit off your arm first before you try to act tough, boy. Nah, for what? For what? For what? For what? Give me a reason. What you going to my car for? I locked your car. For what? You you talking about traffic? What you going to my car for? What is he going to my car for? Give me the reason. Come on, man. It smell like murder. That's your excuse. Okay. 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 Ooh, ooh, I love this. After unlawfully breaking into the car, the officer conducted an extensive search but failed to discover anything incriminating. When questioned about the illegal search, the officers had no justifiable explanation to offer. All right, man, you sit back in your car. It says it's not like right? What the f I, it, ain't, it ain't against you or you or you, you feel me? Come on, man. It's legal in July, bro. And, and listen, it, like I said, it don't got nothing to do with you, you, or you. It's legal in July, right? So if he did find marijuana here, July 1st, they gonna, what? They gonna throw it out, right? However, the saga continues. The individual pursued the case further and obtained the video from the officer's body camera, revealing that the officer lied to gain access to the car. Using deception to extract information may seem underhanded, but it's a tactic employed by officers on numerous occasions. On August 1, 2021, a Florida man sought assistance from the police one evening after getting lost and being unable to identify his location. Two officers approached him, but rather than providing assistance, they took a different course of action. Hi. Okay, so I'm trying to find, I'm trying to see where my girlfriend, I need my girlfriend to know where I'm at. I'm sure. We're asking you what happened. Can you get off the phone, please? We're trying to figure out what happened here. Well, I tried to turn, make, make this turn, and I thought it was this turn. Um, it was dark, and I made this turn instead. Long story short, I ended up off the tracks, and that's where I'm at now. So that's why I'm stuck now, and I can't move back or forward at all. I was asking them to send a police cruiser. I wanted them to send me a tow truck to be able to pull me out, but I'm tripping on myself. Drunk, but it doesn't work that way. I'm sorry? Because you're drunk, but it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. I'm sorry? Uh, uh, alright. I'm on my radio. Yeah, and uh, this is not a traffic stop. I called you out here. You know, it's for familiar rights. It's a crash. It's not a crash at all. Uh, it's it's a crash. Crash. Not only did the officers attempt to interrogate him, but it is quite surprising how these two officers assumed he was drunk without conducting any field sobriety tests to confirm it. As the cops continued interacting with the man, one of them did the most unexpected thing. So, Who's the victim? License, CSX. registration, insurance. I'm sorry? CSX. CSX is the victim. You don't see what happened? They are the victim right now. Are they the victim They're right now? They're having to stop their trains because No, I know black and white how it goes. Low, I know exactly how it goes. Ignorant. License, registration, insurance. They know me license lounge. It's all right in there, but I'm not going to give it to you until I need to. Right now you need to. I'm at Meridian and Jackson. What are you doing? Whoa, 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 whoa. She's pulling the knife out of your pocket. Her? Why yeah, did you just, why did you, no, no, no. What are you doing? 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 What are you talking about, bro? You just pushed her. No, I didn't. Are you kidding me? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Are you serious? Yeah. I called you guys. And I said, Did you call you? Yes, I did. Somebody else no, called no, no. I know the two boys that called you before school, and then I called you after. Oh, so I called you for help, and I get arrested. That is crazy. Right 
your personal one. You just punched my part. You can say whatever you want. That's fine. You have to aggress him. You. As a person who did not want to provide his information when he got here. It's all right, baby. For those who don't know, touching or hitting someone against their will is equivalent to battery, and these officers violated this man's rights by claiming to search him without any prior warnings. Subsequently, after the officer arrested him, his girlfriend arrived and was briefed about the situation. He hit something that made him end up like that, right? So we asked for his driver's license and registration and insurance, and he said no. I went, he has a knife right here, and he keeps putting his hands where you are, so I went to take the knife, and he pushed her. Now you need to. I'm at Meridian and Jackson. What are you doing? Whoa, 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 whoa. So that is why he's arrested. He's obviously drunk. We can't do anything about the DUI. But like we said, this is a crash, and... It is not unexpected that this police officer, seeking to absolve both herself and her colleague, presented an entirely different version of events, embellishing the man's actions. They then concluded, without any sufficient evidence, that he was drunk and had crashed his car. The man then filed a lawsuit against the police department for the violation of his rights. Body cameras are designed to capture individuals in the act, but sometimes those individuals are the ones wearing the badge. This was precisely the case with Marco Burke, a Middle Tennessee State University police officer. Just after midnight on May 10, 2018, Burke was dispatched to respond to a car crash involving a reckless driver. Upon arrival, he discovered an abandoned vehicle. After a brief inspection of the vehicle, Burke returned to his car and reported that nothing unusual was going on. Just the vehicle is unoccupied, I don't, um, that's it. However, before the conclusion of his shift, he found himself under arrest and facing five counts of theft while on duty. Why? The car turned out to be bait, and the cameras installed in it captured Burke engaging in compromising activities. This narrative had its origins months earlier, when an AR-15 weapon went missing from a police locker. Suspicion initially fell on Burke, who vehemently denied any involvement. In response, the police chief orchestrated a sting operation to catch him in the act. Was, was he going to report these items as being part of the inventory of things taken from that car? They concealed $1,100 in cash and bottles of what appeared to be oxycotton filled with sugar pills inside the car, strategically placing hidden cameras. Burke's own body camera became the instrument that sealed his fate, recording him as he sifted through the bait car and picked the planted items. That evening, he had to justify to his wife why he wouldn't be returning home. I got caught up in, uh, in, in something, and I got in trouble. I know what I did. They did a thing, and, and I got caught. I'm so embarrassed. Burke ended up pleading guilty to three felonies. It's a tough case to argue when caught red-handed. This is Anselmo Morales Torres, aged 32, who, on September 2, 2018, encountered Cranston officer Andrea Sella in Rhode Island after being reported for suspicious activity while filming a public building. Upon Officer Andrea's arrival, she persistently requested identification. However, when Torres declined, the situation rapidly escalated. Is she videotaping? Facility? Why you videotaping the facility? Okay. Smile on purposes? So, what's going on? I don't answer questions. Do you have any idea on your butt? I don't answer questions. Okay, we got a call for a suspicious person, okay? Because this is kind of suspicious behavior. Okay, what crime so, do you suspect me of committing? Sorry, right. before we act stupid, let's just talk about when you're standing in front of a facility that's a government building, you're filming it like that. Well, the attention of the security guards, right? There might be some cause for concern for who you are and if you intend to do anybody any harm over here. Well, I, ain't, I have no ill will. All right, well, I can't take your word for it, okay? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to identify yourself. Well, do you know that I am? we're standing in a public property? That's fantastic. And I'm unless police, you're... Okay? I understand. I'm investigating something right now. Okay, so am I. Service, okay? So am I. What are you investigating? 
I'm a private investigative uh, journalist gathering content for a story. And you should know that unless I'm being suspected of a crime, I don't have to provide ID. For those unfamiliar with the law, an individual not suspected of any specific crime has the right to choose whether or not to disclose their identity when approached by authorities. In Torres's case, he was well within his rights to refuse to provide his information. Subsequently, Officer Andrea was joined by additional police officers, escalating the situation further. Just, well, you haven't identified yourself to me. I don't have to, ma'am. You're a government official. You're entitled to identify yourself. What What's your name and badge number? If you do not identify yourself to me, yes. can we continue to do this? Yes. Can you tie me up? Yes. Okay. Let's not make a bigger thing than we have to. Okay? It's not. We're, I'm just okay. doing a lawfully protected... Right. I'm, do you have, can you identify yourself as, as a journalist, then? Do I don't have, have to, ma'am. This is the United yes, States of America. No, okay. I don't, ma'am. I think you need to review the laws. Maybe you need to okay. review the laws. No. Nope. Maybe you need to review the laws, ma'am. Do you have a supervisor? Is, what's going to happen is... What's going to happen? Okay, then this is going to rise to the level of obstruction of justice because I have to figure out... What, what crime What what crime do you, you suspect me? You tell me what you're doing here. I already your told you, ma'am. is highly suspicious. I already told you, ma'am. No, no, you're not explaining Can I speak anything. to your supervisor? If you, if you just, if you simply identify yourself... Well, ma'am... ...and explain what's going on here, then we don't have an issue. I already told you. But I'm going to start to get aggravated well, if you take up more of my time today. Do you understand? Well, ma'am... Okay. You're taking time for yourself. I'm a public. I'm a public citizen. I'm on a public sidewalk, recording a recording a public building. Unless you're com you're suspecting me of committing any crimes, then I, I suggest to for you to treat me, ma'am. Don't put your hands on me, ma'am. Don't put your hands on me. There. Why are you, ma'am? Why are you? Am I being detained? Put that down. I'm, you can't have anything in your hands right now. Put that I, down. I'm ordering you to I put that down. I do not consent to any seizures or searches. I do not consent to any seizures or searches. That's fine. You don't have to. What crime do you suspect me of committing? It's a usual trait of some overly assertive cops who always want things their way. Just like this female officer, she went to the extent of making threats just to get his identity. Once her supervisor showed up, she chose to detain Torres. I cannot believe this. I cannot believe this. You not, you have you failed to identify yourself. As a government official, I demand for you to contact your supervisor right away. You're her supervisor, sir. What's your name and batch number, sir? That's 422. You can read it yourself. Okay, and what's your last name, sir? Listen to me. What, is, what's, what are you doing here today? Sir, well, right now what we're doing is wasting our taxpayers' money and harassing a uh, uh, good citizen that's only uh, gathering some content for a story. There's no reason for you guys to put your hands on me and search me and do what you do because you, this is not Nazi Germany. This is the United States of America. And, I'm, and I will be filing a formal complaint on you and you will be hearing from me. I promise. Sir, what's your name? I'm not answering questions. Okay, we can do this very simply. We just want to make sure, verify who you are, okay? What you're doing is engaging in suspicious activity. We get called here. So I'm being detained? You're, yes. We're Am I being detained? Yes. yes being detained. Under suspicion of what crime? We're investigating that right now. What you, then you have no authority of well, detaining me. Well, see, this should be a consensual, this sir. should be a consensual conversation. No, what's your name and batch number, sir? Yes. Listen, you don't speak for him. What's your name and batch number? I appreciate that, sir. Okay. So listen, I'm asking what your name is. Okay. Not gonna happen. Okay. We, so you guys go ahead and do whatever you need to do. I'm not gonna answer any more questions. I will be contacting my lawyers for what you guys just did to me. This is invasion of my privacy. This is invasion of my rights. You guys are putting your hands in my pocket. I did not concern to any seizures or searches, and you guys will be hearing from me, I promise you. As one might anticipate, her supervisor didn't take any steps to look into the situation, and, inexplicably, also declined to provide his name. Torres not only faced an unlawful detention, but was also taken to court on charges of obstruction of justice. On February 9th, 2020, Cincinnati Police Captain Amanda Caden was stopped by a Loveland police officer for drifting over the yellow center line. Upon being confronted, Amanda promptly identified herself as a police officer, seemingly attempting to avoid consequences for the traffic violation. However, the officer detected a strong odor of alcohol and observed slurred speech, prompting further inquiry into her condition. Okay, here's the problem. I smell alcohol on you, okay? And your, your speech is slurred. And you had your gun on you. I'm not putting that in the trunk, but your speech is slurred and everything. I don't know what you want me to do. I can't just... I, I see your badge, but I'm telling you, your speech is slurred. 
You smell, you reek of alcohol. What, what, you know, you put me in a bad spot. You want me to drive home, officer? No, this, no, that's not how it's gonna work. You got your on you too? I do. Turn on the, turn on the radio. All right. We're about four blocks from our house. Yeah, we should live. You don't understand the circumstances right now, okay? I, mean, I don't. You don't. I mean, everything's recorded. I can't, I can't just do nothing now. Okay. You guys both reek of alcohol. You were sleeping, passed out sleeping when I Who pulled was? you over. Uh, I was not. Okay. That's fine. Wide awake. Okay. okay. That's fine, but you, she's slurred and everything. I can't just. No, she's not. You do, yeah. officer, that's you do what I, you gotta that, do. That's why, yeah, that's why. The couple tried to talk their way out of the situation, despite being aware of their wrongdoing. The officer then asked Amanda to exit the vehicle and later proposed an eye test. Transfer to inspections. What's that? Inspections. Okay. We live just down the street. I understand that. My hands are tied. Okay, everything's recorded and that's, you know, you yeah, know the I circumstances, right. okay. Um, I've got another officer coming to back me up because you both are armed and all that stuff. and. He's agitated. Um, I'm just going to check your eyes and make sure you're okay. And we'll go from there, okay? okay. All right, you see my pen? I just need to follow the tip of this pen with just your eyes. I'm going to keep your head still, okay? Hopefully this, this will all be taken care of here, okay? All right. All right, this time now I'm going to start the test. I just made sure your eyes were tra uh, tracking equally. All right. I'm going to have to do what I have to do, okay? I'm gonna have to arrest you for drinking and driving tonight. We'll do the paperwork. I'm not gonna charge you for the I'm not gonna do that to you. I have too much respect for you. But I I have to, I can't not, I, I you know what I mean? Not, not for this, it's, you know, you understand, right? You understand the position if we put each other in. You by drinking at Cindy's and driving, and me by having, being the one to stop you. Okay, I, this is my worst nightmare. I hate doing this. Surprisingly, the officer was quite forgiving, expressing leniency, and stating that without the camera, he would have let them go without consequences. He chose to overlook the more severe offense of having a weapon while intoxicated. Amanda was eventually arrested and placed in the police car. Upon returning to the department headquarters, she declined a blood alcohol content test. Later, she faced charges for OVI refusal and violating the center line. This is Amanda Myers, 29 years old, who was pulled over on February 5th, 2020, after colliding with another vehicle outside a bar on Ridge Street. The Parma police responded to a report of a fender bender in the parking lot behind the bar, where they encountered an intoxicated Amanda. I'm a cop too, but I work side job and I work at the bar. Okay. And I'm getting ready to leave. And this guy's like pulls in while I'm about to back out. And his front passenger light gets shattered because he pulls into me as I'm backing out. And he's gonna be like, oh, well, she backed into me. Well, no, he pulled in. And I'm not trying to have my insurance because I know how that goes. Like if you're in reverse, you know. Yeah, so he's in the bar right now? No, he's right here. Okay. He's just a black guy right here. Okay. So you were backing up and he was pulling in? Well, no, I was about to back out and he pulled in to the driveway. So there's like no damage or anything, I don't think. Like this, if he was just trying to save, like, oh, it probably just happened. I don't know. There wouldn't still be, there wouldn't still be debris, but all right. So he was, I'm backing out. I don't know if he was in there, but like, he tried to be like, well, he's backing into me, and like, there was nobody there. Okay. Is this okay. your, is, are you the owner? Yeah. Oh, my boyfriend. As one of the officers confronts Amanda, she quickly asserts that she too is a cop and alleges that she was the one struck, attempting to garner favor from the officer. 
However, subsequent investigation revealed a different story. Okay, so she was backing up as you were still parking right here. No, right. Okay, right. so she was coming out of a spot too. No, like I think she wasn't up there because it was a it was a red pickup truck. Up there. All that was, I think she was over here on the side because all this was full at the time. Because she had when she came out. Well, I'm gonna say that she she was talking to some guy in this car. You know, after she got out of the car, so and then when she got out, she said, "Well." It is clear that Amanda believed she could deceive her way out of the situation. However, at that moment, the officers observed Amanda's slurred speech and requested her to undergo field sobriety tests. How much did you drink today? What's not a lot? I'm going to say like maybe two or three drinks. That was all before four Seriously, three. what though? Two or three shots before uh, four thirty. Vodka? Okay. That was all before four thirty. And it's seven now? Okay. Would you object to doing any standardized field sobriety tests? Yes. You would? Yes. You know that'd be a refusal, right? Yes. Okay. And you know the penalties that go with that, right? Yes. Okay, so why would you, why would you ref want to refuse? Because I'm an officer and I don't want this works. Okay. You do know the penalties that go with refusing, right? Yes. So if you do do the tests, I could see if maybe that's maybe that's not the case today. Okay. So that's also what I'm getting at. Okay. Mm -hmm. Would you want to take the test? Yeah. All right, step out. Sure. Amanda's refusal to take the test only confirmed her intoxication, resulting in her arrest. Finally, she faced charges of operating a vehicle under the influence, refusal with a prior conviction, and reasonable control, similar to an OVI charge. She was terminated from her position shortly thereafter. In July 2023, Officer Blasher responded to a call reporting trespassing individuals on a property. When the people attempted to present their IDs from their phones, the officer became agitated. That suspicion isn't a crime. We're in, we're in full uniform, Miss Lady. We're not going to go wrong. What do you mean, Miss Lady? She is not in full uniform. She has it on her phone. So her... what? I can get anything on my phone. She has her badge, her name. I don't care. She should have her badge around her neck. Give me oh, like oh, a name. Oh. Okay, okay. And Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Can I get if, a supervisor? I call, if I if I call, can I dig in my pocket to grab my phone? Sure, you can get your supervisor as well. Okay. Anyway. No, I want your supervisor. Oh, I don't. Well, can you call one? I don't have one on duty. What are you right now? The Blasky. All right. Give me. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you. You gonna get what you gotta get coming. When things weren't going her way, the officer called for backup and provided false information over the radio, unaware that one of the men had overheard her. So you're telling the right thing. You ain't doing nothing wrong. I know you're not. I'm, I know you, I know you ain't doing nothing wrong, right? I'm not saying you're doing it. Right. You can cancel that. I didn't say you're doing anything wrong, but I want you hey. to identify yourself because you're going in and out okay. of all these buildings. That's all I asked for, okay. right? Even telling her to call her supervisor did not calm her down. She continued to be aggressive and confrontational. Like, we don't have to give you over that. We don't have to give you over that. You're not going to talk to me like that, young lady. Was your identification? You're not going to talk to me like that. That's all I asked for. Miss Lady, and right. I and I will That's give you. Would you like my lawyer's but number? Stand on law, though. Would you like my lawyer's number? My lawyer's number. Guys, I, I am not speaking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm speaking to you. I will be looking at you. You're so hostile, Miss Lady. At last, her supervisor showed up, and he supported the workers, leaving her to eat her words. Jacksonville rapper Charles Jones, also known as Fulio, was stopped by the police on suspicion of being a gang member. 
During what was supposed to be a routine traffic stop, the police searched his vehicle and kept him handcuffed for two and a half hours. Jones has now filed motions, with his lawyer seeking the removal of the lead prosecutor from the case. They allege that she inappropriately appeared at the scene and instructed the police to collect evidence, including cell phones, without a warrant. A traffic stop is supposed to be a traffic stop. You stop someone for a traffic violation, you write them a ticket, you let them go on their way. There's no special rules just because you're a rapper or you're a suspected gang member that, that means that you have any less protections under the Constitution. In response, the state attorney's office defends its prosecutor's routine presence at crime scenes, asserting that they assist law enforcement in arrests involving individuals associated with violent crime in the community. The office expresses confidence in prevailing on the motions filed by Jones's attorneys. Jamar Mackey, a father of two, finds himself wrongly accused of credit card fraud by two officers, leading to his handcuffing in front of his family. Despite Mackey and his fiancée, Chantel Coville, repeatedly asserting they have the wrong person, the police sergeant cuffs Mackey, citing his resemblance to a suspect. What? What did he do? We just got my family. But he did nothing. Y'all got the wrong person. We don't even have a black truck. Jamar, what are you doing? Y'all We ain't here with our family. Are you serious right now, dog? In 2020. In 2020. You can have a name. That's how I get treated, bro. You have the right to be upset, sir. Black Lives Matter. Y'all see why we fight. Basically, we just sitting down enjoying the holidays, trying to get some lunch and with my family. And next thing you know, I'm in handcuffs. No words, no explanations. It's just like, how has nothing changed? How is everything still the same? How do you still racial profile a black man with dreads that way in 2020? How do you do that? It's still happening this day. The police later admit it was a case of mistaken identity, apologizing for the discomfort caused to Mackey. No one wants to be handcuffed in front of a family, in front of the public, and like the officer did on Saturday, we apologize for the discomfort a specific suspect description, including clothing and other factors, was then provided to our officers. And we know as a result that Mr. Mackey was subsequently approached and handcuffed. Mackey's lawyer interprets the video as evidence of systemic issues in police training. Everybody in this region knows this is how you get treated. This is how black males get treated in Virginia Beach. So this is what we hope to be able to change. As me looking back at the video, it hurts me, man, because what if they just shot me in front of my son or tased me in front of my son, like, for no reason? I don't know if he'll be afraid of the police now or if he'll, like, you know, um, just not care for them because what of what he saw. Even though the police apologized for the incident, what about the 13-year-old who witnessed the entire event? It must have been really tough for the kid. In Providence, Rhode Island, three teenage suspects were detained by the police. The situation unfolded when two 15-year-olds and a 16-year-old allegedly pointed a weapon at civilians and the police from a convertible car, initiating a prolonged chase with over 770 police radio calls. The teenagers were eventually apprehended, and during the arrest, Officer Domingo Diaz reportedly punched a juvenile who was already restrained, causing concerns among onlookers. This incident resulted in one of the suspects being taken to the hospital. The teenagers now face charges of felony assault with a deadly weapon and conspiracy. Following the arrest, two police officers, Domingo Diaz and Mitchell Voyer, have been suspended with pay as an investigation into their use of force unfolds. In January 2018, Hayden and Weston Young, two boys aged 12 and 14, were on their way home from their grandparents' house after a family dinner. As they neared their home, a police car turned the corner with its lights on. The car came to a stop, and the officer stepped out with his weapon drawn. Despite the boys calmly walking toward his car and having no reason to believe that they posed a threat, the officer, who was actually searching for two grown men who had fled from the police earlier, swiftly ordered them to get on the ground, handcuff them, and pointed his weapon at them. Hey, what are you guys doing? Hey, stop, 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 turn away. The boy's mom, Cassandra Cassie Polrice, 
witnessed the unfolding incident from her front yard. She hurried to the scene and informed the officers that they were her sons. Despite her pleas, the officer ignored her, pointed his taser at her, and ordered her to get back inside. Hey, sit back! Get back! For six minutes, the boys remained face down on the sidewalk while the officer circled them with his weapon aimed at their backs. Eventually, the officer's sergeant arrived, assessed the situation, quickly recognized the mistake, and released the boys. That's 10 4. Get on the ground! Put, put your hands out! Hands out! The incident didn't end that night. Cassie and the boys talked with a lawyer and decided to file a federal civil rights lawsuit against the officer for making a wrongful arrest. The district court agreed and found that the officer had violated the boys' Fourth Amendment rights. But the 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, in a divided opinion, found that the boys had never been arrested at all. Instead, it said that what constitutes an arrest can be hazy, and that the officer's conduct did not violate the Fourth Amendment. A man named John Effort was approached by two officers for jaywalking across Holcomb Bridge Road. Both officers exited their vehicles with tasers in hand, and despite Effort's inquiries about his wrongdoing, they commanded him to the ground. The officers deployed the taser three times before finally handcuffing him. The crosswalk right there, what did I do? No crosswalk right there. What did I do? Get out! What did I do? He has not told me anything, sir. You jaywalked again, right? Wow, right in front of us wow. again, bro. Effort initially faced charges of jaywalking and two counts of misdemeanor obstruction, but these charges were later dropped. The solicitor's office reviewed the video and saw that my client committed no crime. They dropped all charges. My client was in a fetal position saying, please don't sh me. Simply because you wear a badge and a gun, that doesn't give you the right to use excessive force on anyone. One of the involved officers, Charles Bynum, resigned from the department while under investigation for a separate incident. Effort ended up filing a $10 million lawsuit against the county and the two officers. This is Lourdes Hernandez, who on September 19th, 2020, caught the attention of Officer Gustavo Avina in Las Cruces, New Mexico, for speeding. However, Hernandez unfortunately made a big mistake parking her car in the traffic lane and was soon confronted by Officer Gustavo. How are you doing? Good. I have my duty gun in my glove box. Your what? In my glove box. Okay. I'm Officer Avina of State Police. Okay, yeah. I speed of 73, I speed of 55 here. Sorry. Okay, and you see license and chance of registration. Um, do you want me to get untang you? I have my, uh, yeah. oh, yeah. No. Oh, my badge. Duty for what? What do you do? LCPD. Okay. <clears throat> okay, where are you coming from? From El Paso. El Paso. Were you, were you going a little fast? No, I was actually confused because I was like, I thought you were trying, I honestly thought you were running lights and sirens somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, let me keep going. Yeah. I'm on this lane, so mm -hmm. my bad. Lourdes? Lourdes, Lourdes, do me a favor. Go ahead and, uh, turn off your car next to your vehicle, please. Exit my vehicle? Yes, please. Okay. You pull over in the middle of the road, you know you know that, right? This is actually yeah, a lane. I just, I honestly, like, sir, I didn't have any idea that you were pulling over. I, was just, I know, but like, you normally pull over, like, on the shoulder. I never get pulled over. <laughs> like, I don't, I know. How I long have you been a police officer? Like, a year. I know I should know better. I'm so sorry. Yeah, like, like look where you're stopped. I know. I'm so sorry, like. Okay, go I, ahead and exit the vehicle, please. Okay. During the encounter, Hernandez wasted no time in letting Officer Gustavo know she's a Las Cruces Police Department officer, thinking he'd recognize it and cut her some slack. But things didn't go as planned because Officer Gustavo picked up on Hernandez being a bit drunk, prompting him to instruct her to step out of the vehicle. All right, let me, let me ask you a question because you smell like alcohol. There's a note of alcohol coming from you. Okay, uh, I can smell it. That's why I pull you out of the car. Okay. okay. Even though, you're, even though you're chewing gum or whatever, mm -hmm. there's alcohol I can smell. And your eyes are a little red, too. I'm tired. I'm no, just trying yeah, to go no. home. I don't understand. It's 2 in the morning. Mm -hmm. But a uh, order of alcohol and blotch out watery eyes, those two kind of, uh, I'm a little, I'm wondering. So, have you been drinking, yes or no? No. 
No? I would like to do field sobriety test on you. I haven't been drinking. It doesn't matter. Okay. I would but like to do a field sobriety test. I, I smell alcohol. Mm. Okay, you're telling me one thing, but I'm smelling something else. Mm. But I haven't been drinking. I'm telling you that right now. Okay, so. well, look at that. I don't believe you. Okay. I don't believe you. I'm sorry, but, I haven't. But if that's your statement, that's your statement, that's fine. Like I said, I smell alcohol. You have blotch of watery eyes. Okay. And just from my previous experience and now this year working, I had a lot of people smelling or with the odor of alcohol and chewing gum. I don't know why. It's maybe it's a coincidence. I don't know, but it happens a lot. It's pretty often. It happens pretty often too. Okay, so can I do feel sobriety, yes or no? No, I haven't been drinking. Okay. I'm gonna place you under the rest. Put your hands right there. Okay. Because you know that feel sobriety is optional, okay? okay? I can't can I can't force you. Super basic, please. Realizing the trouble she was in, Hernandez decided to play hardball, refusing any tests, and pushing the officer to arrest her. This forced him to take the step of arresting her. Once in the police cruiser, Officer Gustavo discovered a badge and a weapon inside her vehicle and was later joined by his supervisor. <sighs> okay, who's your sergeant? Um, Garcia, or... I'm, on, I'm on good guards. It's just I was explaining to him. I'm on light duty right now. Sure. Because I tore my meniscus. Oh, okay. In a fight, so. Okay. Uh, sergeant Garcia, I'm sorry, I don't know LCPD okay. too well. Um, um, Garcia... Number 737. What's his first name? Feliciano Garcia. Feliciano. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, cool. If you need anything else, I'll be right here. Let me, um, we, we have to secure your, obviously, your, your department stuff. Okay. The supervisor collected Hernandez's official police weapon and belongings before she got transported to the jail for processing. Hernandez faced charges of driving under the influence, speeding, and recklessly handling a weapon. As a consequence, she received a two-month suspension without pay from her position as a police officer. On September 18th, around 5 p.m., Larry Morrison, age 34, got arrested following a nearly three-minute confrontation with Detroit police officers. He was attempting to access his truck after locking the keys inside, but the patrolling officers interpreted it as a potential vehicle break-in. Larry resisted cooperation, leading to a worsening of the situation. Despite pleas from his family to let him go, the officers persisted. And we will continue to be transparent with the community. You can't just roll past you trying to give me a window and not do something, you know what I mean? Don't have to tell you, you nothing. Do have to tell I don't have to tell you my name. Am, you I, am I under arrest? You're detained right now, yes. No, I'm not. For what? You are. Because of, from what it looks like, you're trying to break into this car. Do burglars break into car cars while neighbors are standing out on their porch? And when the police show up to somebody that is committing a crime trying to break into a car, do the, does the individual stand there and continue doing what he's doing? No. Is that a good practice if I'm getting pulled over? No. It has a chance to escalate the situation, even though that's my right to do that. Just like officers have a right, for example, for, to arrest you for not wearing a seatbelt. The Detroit Police Department has released footage from body and dash cameras. They state that currently, their review of the available footage indicates that the officer's initial questioning of the individual was prompted by a valid law enforcement concern. This is Jesse Garcia, wrongly apprehended for a crime she didn't commit back on May 24, 2020. Surveillance footage caught a man smashing her windshield. Later, upon leaving a bar, she sought help from nearby police officers, who instead questioned her about a hit and run in the vicinity. Despite her and her friend's explanations, the officers refused to believe her car wasn't involved. He got hit. Your car is involved. We just left Hi-Fi. It didn't register that they were thinking I could be a suspect or I was the one that did this. He was totally innocent in this case. After a search for evidence, the police claimed to find glass shards on Jesse's shirt. Then, she was handcuffed and charged with DUI failure to stop at the scene of an accident, and possession of illegal substances. In response to the wrongful arrest, Jessie filed a lawsuit against the city, which ultimately settled with her for $200,000 in compensation. In May, an Uber driver named Jose Bautista got pulled over a faulty headlight, and deputies found an active warrant for aggravated battery from South Florida dating back to 1996 when they checked his license. However, Jose insisted he had completed his probation for that arrest and claimed it was a case of mistaken identity. He mentioned being confused with the wrong person before. 
Have you been arrested before? In Miami? Ever. 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 I got a, I got arrested in 97. For Never, what? Huh? For what? It was a, a simple assault. The same thing happened? How long ago? Uh, back in 2011. The Florida Department of Law Enforcement acknowledged that someone in Miami had attached the wrong FBI number to Jose's case. Yeah, it was validated this year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The data first, the only thing I'm saying is off, but they're trying to confirm it. Did they promptly seek to confirm the identity of the individual? Did they chase down this information and make sure that they had the right person in custody? If he's fingerprinted upon being booked, shouldn't his fingerprints have come up different from the Mr. Batista that should have been arrested? As a result, prosecutors dropped the charges against Jose Bautista. On November 20th, 2022, in Marion, South Carolina, David Wiggins was on his way home from Burger King when an officer pulled him over after mistakenly identifying his license plate as that of a suspect. The officers ordered him out of the vehicle onto the ground and handcuffed him while another officer kept his weapon pointed at him. Can I ask you what it is? Run from me? Just be the one. Copy. All right, sir, how are you? Since you give me that tag. My contract for 2016 Dodge Challenger last name Green. It's not a hammer. It's clear. It's green. Upon realizing their error and that they had pulled over the wrong person, the responding officer apologized to Wiggins. Okay. <laughs> That's scary. Oh, look, I'm sorry. You got almost the same tag, same car. He must have passed you going through, and you turned off this one. Yeah, it must have you happened. Good. We had everybody coming through. Yeah. You good? Yeah. All right. You have a good one, okay? I'm sorry about that. However, the situation didn't end there. Wiggins waited several months before filing a lawsuit against the city, ensuring that his legal team had gathered all the necessary information. They are now alleging civil assault, battery, negligence, and false imprisonment. A man who was simply taking pictures and filming around a police department found himself in handcuffs when a police officer arrived and illegally detained him. Throughout the encounter, the man repeatedly requested to speak with a supervisor. Okay, I'm gonna don't put touch you in cuffs. Okay, okay. That's fine. you're gonna be put in cuffs. Supervisor. Okay, supervisor on his way. Okay, I'm asking you questions you're here. I could be arrested right now, be put in cuffs, taking pictures of the police department. Don't turn my phone off. Okay, you are not in control here. I am, actually. You work for me, I don't work for you. 46, I got one in custody over here. I need a supervisor. Lose your job, buddy. It's illegal detainment. Can you please call a supervisor out here? This is illegal detainment under 163103. Hang on here. You don't have permission to search me, I don't consent to any search procedures. Okay, I'm waiting for a supervisor to come up here. Okay, that's fine. Okay. What's your name and badge number? Romero. Okay, sounds okay. good. Did you stop my video camera over there? Eventually, a supervisor arrived, and after a while, the man was released. On May 9th, 2021, Elena Chiachi was driving on Hamilton Road when she veered into a yard, colliding with an RV and a tree. Shortly after, the Medina Township Police responded to a call regarding her suspicious behavior. Upon arrival, an officer questioned her about the incident. I'm telling you, I was stuck and I was trying to go home. I was stuck in their yard. I got stuck in the grass and I couldn't get out. Why? I was stuck in the grass and I could not get out. I understand that. You're not Stop understanding. Repeating. I was stuck. You're not understanding me. Why were you in their yard? Why are you screaming at because me? Because you're 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 because you're not even understanding. You're screaming at me. I was stuck and I could not get out. Okay. I was stuck in the grass. Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question again. Out. Why did you pull in their driveway? I was stuck. God, you just you went off the street and you just got stuck. Listen, if you want to scream at me all you want, then go ahead and you want to do whatever you need to do and. You want to go to jail. For, for what? Do you for what? Let's go. Let's do some tests. Come on out here. It's fine. Yeah. For what? For what? Yeah. For what? You have any problems with your eyes? No. For what? Suspicion of driving under the influence. For what? Because you drove through somebody's yard. Because I was stuck. I just said I was. You can't stuck even stand. And I can't even. You get can't even stand. I was stuck. You're repeating the same it thing over and wet, over. And I am stuck. What You're do you repeating. want me to do? Throughout the interaction, Elena's speech and choice of words clearly indicated that she was severely intoxicated, 
This led the officer to conduct a sobriety test on her. Come on over here. Come on over here. We're going to check your eyes. Do you want to perform these field sobriety tests? Do what you need to do. Do you want to perform these field sobriety tests? Do you want to perform these field sobriety tests? Come on over here and perform them. Do what you need to do. I'm not moving, so go right ahead. So you, uh, you're refusing all tests? I'm not refusing. Do what you need to do. Well, I can't do them unless you cooperate. Do what you need to do. Come on over here then. Do what you need to do. Okay. I'm not refusing. You are refusing. No, I'm not. I'm staying You're right actually refusing. What? Do what you need to do. You're actually refusing. I'm not refusing. Do what you need Come on to over do. here. And... I'm not moving from where I need to be. So if you need to do what you need to do, I'm right here. Do what you need to do. Okay. So you're refusing all tests. I'm not moving. Do what you need to do from where I'm at. That's funny. So what? What's your reason? Drive it on the influence now. Oh, really? So you yeah. want to... Oh, okay. You reek of alcohol. Do what I need to do. What do you need to do? You're really okay. When the officer observed Elena's noncompliance, he placed her in handcuffs. At this point, Elena thought it was okay to be entitled. Excuse me. What the f*** is this? So you think that you could just manhandle me? That's oh. fine. Because guess what? I have rights too, and I'm a police officer, so good luck with that. <laughs> You're a police officer? Yep, good luck with that. Where at? Good luck with that. Where at? Good luck with that. Oh my gosh. Wouldn't be the first time. Good luck with that. Uh, you have a weapon on you? Do you have a did, weapon on you? Did you check me before you got in here? Do you have a weapon on you? Did no, you I'm, I'm calling me? for a female. Did you check me before I got in here? Good luck with that. 15, 16, 15, 15, 15. Oh, now you want to check me for I'm going to have a female check car? you because that would be appropriate. Good luck with that. Are you threatening me? <laughs> Good luck with that. Can you see if the post has a female? female. For a pat down. For a pat down. Oh, <laughs> one side on the back. You should have probably checked me before I got okay. in the car. Real smart. Okay, where do you work? Good job. Where do you work? Good job. Where do you work? None of your business. To discover that a police officer is involved in a DUI is already disappointing, but acting entitled due to her status as a police officer is simply stupid. Unfortunately, Elena continued to be consistently uncooperative and belligerent, even after additional officers arrived at the scene. I am under arrest. What precinct? Why am I under arrest? She's not Where the one that arrested you. It doesn't why matter. Why am I under arrest? You don't know, baby girl. Where you want me to want tell you? you? Drive it under the yeah, influence. Tell me. For what? what baby girl, why am I under arrest? Baby girl, what are you going to tell me? For what? Because you don't know. Because okay. you're brand new. Why am I under arrest? I'm let's show I need to tell you. Do it. Go ahead. You can tell Do me it. whatever you want to tell me. You violate my rights. I'm not. Do it. Why am I under arrest? Let's get out of the For car. What? So why? I'm on. asking you, female officer, why am I under arrest? Female well, Let's before get out you of the put car. your dirty, lesbian hands on me, why am I under arrest? Let's get out of the car now. Why am I under arrest? Get out of the car. For? Get out. What? Elena was eventually taken to the station and faced charges including criminal damage, OVI, failure to control, and reckless operation. However, all these charges were dropped, except for the OVI charge. Elena later entered a plea of no contest to drunken driving and received a sentence of 10 days in jail, one year on probation, and a 30-month driver's license suspension. Additionally, she was ordered to pay an $875 fine and $3,726 in restitution for the property damage she caused. Hold on to our final clip, which is the most scariest and most creepiest one, and if you like what you saw, Make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on our creepiest videos. James King, a law-abiding college student in Grand Rapids, Michigan, was walking on the sidewalk when two men approached him and stepped off the curb towards him. Members of the task force misidentified James as a fugitive, and one of them stepped behind him, boxed him out, and took his wallet from his back pocket. In an attempt to flee, he was tackled and ultimately subjected to severe beating. Oh my God. They're beating him up. Like, they're literally assaulting him. After being beaten, James was in poor condition and was taken to the hospital. From the hospital, he was directly transported to a jail cell, spending the night in a cold cell where he experienced emotional distress. He managed to call his parents, and they rushed to bail him out as soon as they could. Hello, this is a prepaid collect call from James, an inmate at Kent County Correctional Facility. Hello. Hey. Um, we're getting screwed. I'm going to prison, I think. 
No, I don't think that. We're going to get a bondsman and get you out of there. It's 50000 I know. This is bad. This is really bad. After being released from jail, the police charged James with three violent felonies, leading to a trial six months later. Despite facing a criminal prosecution aimed at impeding James from asserting his constitutional rights, he was ultimately acquitted. However, this marked the beginning of his legal battle. When James filed a lawsuit against the officers to hold them accountable for their actions, they argued for various forms of immunity, resulting in the court dismissing James's case. While an appeals court overturned some aspects of that decision, the government has now elevated James's case to the U.S. Supreme Court, seeking protection for the officers from any accountability for violating the Constitution. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can stay updated with our latest videos.